The U.N. wants the area around Ukraine's Zaporizhia power station declared a demilitarized zone, fearing it will become Ukraine's next front line. Concerns are growing over a possible nuclear disaster after the nuclear power plant was shelled this week. The Zaporizhia power station is Europe's largest nuclear power plant and has been occupied by Russian forces since March, but operated by Ukrainian workers who now say the power station was hit five times on Thursday, including near stored radioactive materials. Russia and Ukraine are blaming each other for the shelling and risking a potential nuclear disaster. So for more on this, let's bring in the vice president of nuclear materials security at Nuclear Threat Initiative, Scott Roker. Scott, welcome. Thank you for being with us. So first off, can you tell us a little bit about this particular power plant and how it operates? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Um, so as you noted, it's the largest power plant, not just in Ukraine, but all of Europe. It has six separate reactors at the site, as well as spent fuel storage, which includes both uh, fuel stored in fuel ponds inside the reactors, as well as dry cask storage outside the reactor. So we're talking about a very huge facility. You know, one of the things that seems encouraging, I was reading that Russia intends to use the plant to power Crimea, which seems hopeful. They might not want to destroy it for that reason. But now the U.N. wants to declare the area around Zaporizhia demilitarized. If that doesn't happen, there are uh, are there any precautions that and, and that can be taken to protect this, to prevent a nuclear disaster. And I also want not to use a pun, but can you cool off our worst fears of how bad this could be? Um, I'm, I'm understanding that it wouldn't be to the level of Chernobyl, as I think people's worst fears would be, but there's clearly a population there. It seems like it could be the new front line of this conflict. And, and how, just how, how, how horrible that would this catastrophe be, if you can qualify that? Absolutely. Yeah. So certainly the, the best way to prevent the disaster is the removal of troops. But absent that, uh, a visit from the International Atomic Energy Agency and their inspectors would be really important. This is the international organization that oversees the safe and secure operation of nuclear power plants. Um, and there's incentives on all sides to hold such an inspection. Uh, Russia has, in fact, welcomed it in the past, uh, in part because they believe it legitimizes their presence at the facility. Um, but at the same time, they've recently stated that a visit to the facility couldn't happen before uh, the end of August or early September at the earliest. And from a Ukrainian perspective, it, it wants to better understand the situation inside the reactors and to deter basically to determine if there are any safety or security issues that need to be resolved. Um, but the practicalities around such a visit has been the reason that it hasn't happened up to this point. Of course, it seems um, uh, but it, it seems dangerous for anybody to go there at this point. Does the visit need to happen before it's declared a demilitarized zone? I mean, what's the order? I mean, certainly there is a lot of danger with sending in some international observers at this time, given the ongoing hostilities. So there would need to be a cessation of hostilities before any visit could take place. So, uh, you know, let's talk for a minute, Scott, about worst case scenario. We are talking about the largest nuclear reactor uh, in Europe. So what what are we talking about in, in terms of a worst case scenario, not to alarm people? Uh, you know, obviously, we want to ratchet back any sort of fears. But what could happen here if uh, things do not go as planned? Yeah, I agree. We don't want to overstate the threat mm -hmm. um, and the risk that's there at the site. It, it wouldn't be a nuclear disaster with the mushroom cloud and the associated blast zone. But the thing that I'm most concerned about are, are the uh, dry casks of spent fuel that I mentioned before. Um, if some sort of explosive were to hit that, it could create a significant release of radiation that could be more damaging than anything that we've seen before, impacting parts of Europe, regions nearby. Um, and moreover, the fact that there are ongoing hostilities, it would be really difficult to respond to such an event. Um, and it should be noted that Ukraine and Russia have had experiences with such a situation in the past. And yeah. I, I want to believe that neither side would want a repeat of that. Uh, Chernobyl played a really important role in the fall of the Soviet Union. And such an event uh, at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant could lead to further destabilization of both countries. Sometimes it seems like people have short memories, uh, yeah. alarmingly so. It sounds like the radius is, is wide enough to be concerning tens of kilometers, I was reading. Uh, the, the comparison from one of the experts was talking about not, uh, not Chernobyl, but perhaps Fukushima, which is also Very historic. Bad. Scott Roker, thank you so much for joining us.